Yo, as always, like, share, subscribe. Now let's just get into it. So Michigan plays Wisconsin this Saturday, 12 o'clock in Wisconsin. So I'm going to run over the stats, some of their stats, and then I'm going to get into it. So Wisconsin is 1-2. and two. They lost to Penn State, and they lost to Notre Dame. Uh, Graham Mertz on the season, he's 56%. He's got 566 yards, one TD, and he's got four, uh, six picks on the year. Six picks, four fumbles, two lost fumbles. Now, their starting running back is Chez Malusi. Hope I said that right. 319 yards on the year, uh, four yards of carry, two TDs. Now, to get into this, Wisconsin, I'm going to just start with their defense. Wisconsin has a stingy defense. They are very well coached, and I, I would I would gladly take their defensive coordinator, Jim Leonard. He He's a hell of a defensive coordinator, and he has them – Fundamentally sound, and they play tough defense. They're giving up 23 rushing yards a game. They're giving up 23 rushing yards a game, and they've played Penn State, and they've played Notre Dame. So that right there tells you that this is going to be a game where the offense, they they might, we're going to have to do something because we're going up against another strong defense. So that being said, it's crucial that and it's crucial that we do the stuff that got us that had us successful. Now, if y'all like me, y'all been watching all these other channels and stuff, watching uh Monday morning quarterback and things like this with De Devin Gardner and these guys breaking it down. And Devin was saying the plays were all right and I don't buy into that one. I'm sorry. I I I I I, I mess with DG, but I can't I can't rock with him on that because the plays weren't you weren't given that same eye candy like you were in in the other games. You weren't doing reverses. You weren't doing the jet sweeps. Just running it and then having the eye candy. And this is what killed us. Well, it didn't kill us, but this is how this is how uh Rutgers got back in the game against us was eye candy. It was so much eye candy they were giving us. We had players hesitating. The eye candy is for hesitation. Hesitation gets you killed in big-time football, small-time football. Any level of football, eye candy kills you if you're not disciplined. And that's, what, that's why we saw them get those yards. And they're like, what's going on? Well, they got a reverse coming. They got a fake this way. Quarterback keeps it going this way. That's a lot if you're not watching and being disciplined. And we so we need to do that same type of stuff. I know we don't have a read a option quarterback, but you have to bring that eye candy. If you want to run it 40 times a game, you best be bringing some eye candy because we're not Bama. We can't just line up and just run, run dives all game. It ain't going to work. So you need eye candy. You need something to make the defense worry about. I have to worry about this jet sweep. I have to worry about this run guy running back here. And honestly, not to get too much off track, if I was Gaddis, I would have Blake and I would use being shotgun with two backs and that Blake and Haskins would be in the game at the same time. So when I do that draw, I got a fake going this way with Haskins or, or, or Corum, and I can give it this way. So that creates even more havoc, and I bring a jet sweep with it. Create confusion and stuff. Like, if we didn't see them do these things the first couple games, it wouldn't be a problem. Your problem is we saw you do it, and then you just didn't do it last game. So that's a big thing. Now, I'm hearing Cade and, and Cade – Going over it, Cade was somewhat shook. Now, that's the second game that we've seen Cade get shook, whether it was from a hit or whatever, he was slick shook. So, with that being said, I'm hearing that J.J.'s taking some first-team reps. I don't have a problem with that. Now, whoever's the quarterback, they need to make it easy on him. 
get the quarterback into a rhythm. Whether that I don't care if you do it with a running back screen, I don't care if you do it with quick slants, wide receiver screens, uh, bubble screens. I don't I don't care how you do it, but you got to you got to get them comfortable. So that's just a big thing. Get him comfortable because this defense that we're going against, even if you do all the eye candy and stuff, you may not be able to run against them. So to get them comfortable, you got to do whatever you have to do to get them comfortable. Now, in this game, and this is this is a big thing, and I talked, this is was a problem last game. If 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 you see Haskins getting tough yards consistently where he's getting hit at two yards and still getting three more yards, doing it consistently, don't take him out. He's running like a bell cow. Ride him until the defense is tired. Ride that. Let these dudes do what they do best. Haskins is between the tackles. Let him do that. Let him run over dudes. Corum is not that. Not yet. He may be in a year or two. He may be the complete back. He's not there yet. His his advantage is on the edge, using his speed. Use his speed to your advantage. <laughs> like, it's so simple. Use his speed to your advantage. And I, I, I saw DG saying, well, you can't just run a sweep. And a, actually, you can I don't care what level you own. If my guy's my guy is faster than your guy, he can beat you. If De, if if Denard Robinson is faster than you and he hits that corner, say good night. I don't care what level you in. If Lamar Jackson hits that corner, say good night. It don't matter what level you at. <laughs> you got enough speed. I'm faster than you, and I catch the edge, and I can get to the edge faster than you. I'm about to turn the corner and eat up some yards. That's football. It don't matter what level you at. Speed kills. So I can't I can't rock with him on that. Like trying to no. Nah. Speed kills. You get that speed towards to the edge, like we've done all year. Getting AJ Henning to the edge. Getting Roman Wilson to the edge. Getting Corum to the edge, and they eat up yardage. That's just football. Fast guys get to the edge and they eat up yards. So I can't. Some of this stuff I just can't buy into because uh, you can know as much football as you want to, but if you say some stuff and it just don't make sense, because speed kills. That don't matter what level you at. And Blake Corum is fast, so that's just that. I mean, so that's what I got for the offense. Now, as far as our defense, Graham Mertz hasn't played well, so. With him not playing well this season at all, he like he, we went. Over, I went over six picks. They played three games. He's got six picks. Had two pick sixes against Notre Dame. Four. He's got four fumbles on the year and two. He lost two of them. That's horrible. So honestly, I thought Graham Mertz would be was gonna be a beast. But what I, what I say before the year? Get better. It don't seem like he got better. So, with that being said, you're probably going to see them try to do, if they're watching the film, which of course they are, you and they've beat us before with this type of stuff, with the eye candy. They've beat us with that before. I think that was last year or two years ago. They got us with the eye candy. And that's with the jet sweeps and the reverses, all this stuff coming through, and you either give it to the running back or you give it to the jet sweep, but you still have to respect it every time you see it. There's no like, oh, I'm not going to respect the jet sweep. And then all of a sudden, they fake into it, and then, then they throwing it to him. You have to respect that every time. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some of that in their offense. I know they've had it before, and they've torched us with it, so I wouldn't be surprised if they add some of that, put some wrinkles in there to help their running game. Now, with Graham Mertz, he's just, he's just making a lot of mistakes. He's just not playing well. So – the defense is our strength this year. It looks like a bend but don't break. That, that's what a bend but don't break defense is. And people were talking about the defense saying, oh, they played. No. Nah. They gave up 10 points in the second half, three points in the first half, and had 
what, three fourth down stops. They actually kind of won the game twice for us. No, that defense, that defense is, is slick balling. Now, with the bend but don't break defense, you our corners are back cause, cause, because they won't find the ball. So we don't want to let have them in tight man coverage and then you get jump balls and they're not going to find the ball. So that's why we play a lot of give cushion five and six yards and then they can kind of matriculate down the field somewhat sometimes and then – in the red zone, they get stopped. So, you gonna to me, you're going to see the same type of defense. You're going to bend, but you don't want to break. You, you hope the pass rush gets there in time so they can't just keep throwing those passes to the outside and stuff because they got a cushion. But that's just what the defense is going to be. But with, with Wisconsin, they're going to try to establish the run. They, they're not going to want Graham Mertz to have to throw too much because he's just not playing well this year. So, with that being said, I expect this to see reverses, screens, and things like this to help in the running game. So, on defense, we're going we want to stop we want to stop the running game. I mean, this is every game pretty much. You want to stop the running game and you want Graham Merch to be the one to to have to beat you and then Aiden and the boys can try to pin their ears back and force him to make a mistake because He's prone to making mistakes. He's prone to making mistakes now. So that's just what it is. I'm not sure how much scoring will be done in this one. To me, the, the team that runs the ball best will probably win this game. And it's crucial that Gaddish just gets better with his play calling. The play calling was bad. I don't care what anybody says. That play calling was bad. You, yeah, Cade got shook a little bit. We had a drop, but... Well, we were, he ain't throw nothing but four or five passes in the second half. And he didn't have to throw until it was like, uh-oh, okay, win the game, Kate. Uh, yeah. So the play calling has to get better. You can't just, we're going to run it every time and then, all right, go win the game. It just ain't going to work. The play calling has to get better in the run game and the pass game. Get your quarterback in a rhythm. Like, get your quarterback in a rhythm and use the players – Put them in position to be successful. Haskins is a bell cow. Use him as such, a bell cow. In between the tackles, tough yards, come and get it. He wants to eat. Let him eat. Now, Corum is a speed demon. Use him on the edge. Use him in the screen game. Use him in the, in the pass game. Use him on reverses. Get him to the edge so he can do what he does best. Run past people. Like it's not it's not rocket science how to uh, somebody on Madden knows how to use these players better than they did that last game. AJ Henning, use him on the edge. Hey, if the running game is kind of working, let's get a play action pass and try to get him deep. He seems like he's fast. He's always he's almost taking it to the house on punt, on reverses. Every time he touches the ball, he almost takes it to the house. How about we try to get him deep on a play action pass? Like, come on. Same with Roman Wilson. Like, the play calling has to get better because it, it just won good. I don't care what who who says what. I don't care if you the coach. I don't care if you the Vince Lombardi. I don't care. That play calling was garbage. You can say what you want. It was trash. But I'm not the coach. So that's all I got for this one, y'all. I'm looking for a strong uh, a defensive game. But, hey, if they use our skill players how they can be used, this last thing, if you use our skill position players how and get them in the open field on the edges and get them the ball, we saw, we saw Roman Wilson almost go yard. A.J. Hennon almost go yard. Sandra still almost go yard. We saw these dudes get – 40 and 50 yard gains. These guys are fast. Corum is fast. We don't we have dudes if you get the ball to them the right way, they going to eat up yardage. So I want to hear like like we don't have no talent when these dudes in the same game are picking up big yardage if they just get the ball in the open field. Like these dudes are eating up yardage. Like, so I don't want to hear, like, oh, you, you get it, yeah, speed kills. 
Like, and we have it. Can we utilize it, though? So, that's all I got. Just thinking about that last game and how that played out, it just makes me hot. Because you're doing a disservice to these players, bro. Like, you're doing a disservice to these dudes that that – they it just takes so much work to play football, and and not only that you you they these dudes are in college like it just takes so much with classes workouts two a days uh, getting your work in on your own like put these dudes in position to be successful like come on like I just I just hate it bro like these dudes put in so much work and to see them almost lose games just because the coaches is is having brain farts for a half. Like, that's all I got for this one, y'all. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, go blue.